You're watching CHCO TV's gavel to gavel coverage of the March 2024 regular council meeting for the Municipal District of St. Stephen. I'm Florence Mitchell. In today's meeting, Heather Donahue of the St. Stephen Business Improvement Area will make a presentation regarding a sign for the proposed Gateway Park and a proposed plan to add new murals to the downtown area. Bylaw 05-23-3, a bylaw to amend Council Procedure Bylaw 05-23, will be given its first reading. Under new business, Council will move to adopt the Municipal Records Authority, or MRA, established by the Provincial Archives of New Brunswick as the official guide for the management of municipal records. Finally, Council will discuss a housing task force. Now let's join Council in the Moosehead Room at the Garcelin Civic Center in St. Stephen. All right, welcome everyone to the Missile District of St. Stephen Council agenda for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Uh, before we begin, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are gathered today on ancestral unceded territory of the Pestumanakati peoples. And start with, I'll uh, need a mover and seconder for the agenda for the regular council meeting of March 27, 2024, be approved with the addition of one following late agenda item. So Councilor Second. Greenlaw, Councilor Heislip. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried, thank you. Any conflicts of interest? Seeing none. Okay, mover and seconder for the proposed resolution that the minutes of the special council meeting held on March 13th, 2024 be approved as presented. So Council Heislip, Council Harding, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried, thank you. Uh, mover and seconder for the minutes of the regular council meeting held on February 28th, 2024 be approved as presented. Aye. Council Eastman? Councillor Harding, uh, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, public delegations. Uh, okay, next up we got the BIA presentation by Heather Donahue. Hi. Hi. Um, so you guys got my email and. Uh, I guess, do you want to talk about the sign first? The, uh, or the mural? Signs is A, but it doesn't matter, but A is the sign, so yeah, okay, sure. So the sign um, has been in storage for a couple of years, and we had an arrow put on it, but then we found out that we could put it up in the, out on the highway. So when I was watching the committee in the hall, I thought it would be a great place for our sign to go um, down at the Gateway Park. Now, uh, I've reached out to uh, Atlantic Signs and they were gonna put our, our catchphrase, shop, dine, play over the arrow, and then we can hang free parking. If this is something you guys would like to do, then that would take that space. So I got a quote <laughs> <laughs> for the sign, but that's okay, we can cover it. Um, for them to make that free parking and shop, dine, play, the quote would come in at $4,116 plus tax. Um, I noticed there is a sign down there that says free parking in downtown. Um, but I like the look of the free parking, so I mean, we will, I'm, I'm going to probably find grant money to cover this. So that's an option for you guys if you so wish to have. To fix it up? All yeah. we were going to do is um, you. Uh, that would be the sign. But I mean, the town would have to place it there. Um, I mean, I could maybe look for funding, but I mean. You know, the works department, I'm sure, can put that there and 
and Jennifer, I spoke to Jennifer, uh, she spoke, she stopped into the office and she liked it because she said that that is not great, uh, a great spot for flower beds. So this could be, and it stands out because it's so bright. So if you guys want us, the BIA, to proceed to put the two signs on, the, the catchphrase and the free parking, we can, we can start that and, and then we can have that placed by late spring, early summer. Well, I'm just going to talk away here, folks. Oh, you got something, do you? Yeah. Just, go, go ahead. I just it looks like the one here, so it mm -hmm. complements that, does it? Yes. It's the same. Um, it is yellow. It's like our color. But it looks like the same font. Yep, yep. It, the the Atlantic signs made the two, the digital sign and this sign at the same time. Yep. Yeah. And each other hand. Um, that's why that sign's blue. Oh uh, well, I'm going to ask another more question first. That that bot is there a bo that box included in the bottom, like a so flower the, box? Yeah, the box is, and what the, that is is a flower bed. Yeah, flower. So I said, oh Jen, <laughs> you can put you know flowers in there, and and I don't like she just says that that's a, a spot for full sun, and so oh, it, it may be too much. So I mean, we can fill it in, put grass in it, put. You know whatever you want in there but that's what that is that's a an open box and it was meant for a flower bed so I'm so I'm just thinking does that hold the sign up too or is it like the, the base of it so it wouldn't be that big a deal that's to the base um, the, well it would have to stay on the sign it's the sign the sign is out to the border area arena and so if you want to go out and look at it and get a vision of it it's quite a large sign. Yep, okay. Um, Council Rodas. I'll work oh, there. So that bottom part, Heather, can that actually be changed out? Like if we wanted it to say, welcome to Canada or um, springtime or Sorry, not springtime. Christmas time promotion happening now. Like, I'm just thinking that free parking sign that hangs there, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be technically traded out. Like, if there were an event happening, like International oh, Festival, yeah. you could say International Festival Week. Yeah. This, mm -hmm. yeah. And so well, absolutely that's that. What I like about it because um, even though that main sign can stay as like the figurehead underneath, it could be swapped out depending on what town events we have going on, like mm -hmm. Saint Stephen Burger Week, which. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I'm just manifesting that out there, but just whatever event we have downtown, yeah. we could technically get different things made. Um, 4,000 yeah. <laughs> and 16 plus taxes yeah. for the two signs. Like the International Festival Committee yeah. wanted to invest in something with a Canadian American flag in the corner, they could. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, no, hit it, yeah. There we go. Uh, Heather, uh, just for that on a sign again, other than the, the free parking, could it be surfaced in such a manner, basically, as Emily was saying, that lots of times vinyl, you can just get the things and you just roll it across, then when you're done with it, you can just peel it off. You might want to save it the next year or maybe a special event like what's going on. I think that would be quite wise. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, whatever you guys want to do. Maybe better to have just blank and then maybe just that no well, parking. The, so the two, like where it says shop, dine, and play in the free parking, it is going to be the color of the sign. So they're matching it up. So I mean, I don't know I, if you would want to. So whatever's going on that week or that month or whatever. Mm hmm. Final thing. thing that. Yeah, whatever you guys decide yep. you want to do. Just yeah, so I, as, as staff, any concerns about the location and all that? Nothing's going to interrupt some other plan? Because um, no. uh, as you know, we're, we're only in the infancy of the uh, potential redesign of the, of the Gateway Park area. Um, I, this is a, uh, I think it would be a good addition uh, overall. Um, great that uh, 
uh, Ms. Dunn, he was bringing it up at the front end of the project and, and so we c it can be incorporated into an overall design as we uh, as we move forward. So, um, and as as she indicates, um, the added benefit of, of getting that sign out of the border arena and out into the public. Um, so, you know, win there too. So I think it's, I think it's a, a really great idea, a great location for it. Uh, when, you know, the other location, original location was good. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but uh, this is a good uh, plan B and um, look forward to incorporating it to, uh, you know, subject to everybody's wishes. Oh, do you need anything more from us, Jeff? Or do you need an approval from council or anything like that? No, just uh, no. can take it as direction to, to that's, that's what I thought. in the, in yeah. the planning and, uh, and prepare for, for okay. installation when we're ready. Okay. Thank you, Heather. And do you want me to order the two signs? Like, we've got to, we've got to get the sign shop down in play. Mm -hmm. It's got to cover up the arrow. Yeah. And then if you want the free parking, then I'll have that hang it. Mm -hmm. All right. Another suggestion that somebody gave me, you could say, like, um, washrooms. And the tourists are always looking for where the washrooms are. I mean, that's another sign that could be hanging. But whatever you want. So our third mural, um, you received the package with the description of what Jeff Slater has created. It's a, an excellent, um, he put excellent, an excellent idea. And this mural was gonna call, be called the Celebration of Botany. And it tips a hat to William F. Ganong. And um, how he's, he's done it, um, he's made an archway. And it's all gonna be uh, insects and flowers indigenous of New Brunswick. He's put in our New Brunswick uh, flower, the purple violet. Um, in the, the drawing that I sent you, it's not there yet, but he's also gonna include the provincial bird, the black-capped chickadees. And then somehow he's gonna bring in the New Brunswick flag. It's an interactive mural, so um, a spider's reaching down on one side so you can hold the spider's leg and take a picture. And on the other side, there's a swing, so you could be kind of sitting in the swing. And these have become very popular to, for Instagram, you know, hashtag. And, and he plans on doing it right on the building. So when he did the painting the light on the Simcourt building, um, the attraction he drew just being uh, working on the, the piece in the public was overwhelming to him. So um, he's on game. You asked for us to have like an outline of the mural, what it would cost, and I included that in my email. So if you have any questions with respect to, you know, what touch-ups would cost approximately 10 years from each mural and then 15 years. Any questions for Heather? So the mural would be no cost to the town. I just would ask that when the touch-ups start, need be, um, the town, you know, look at it if they could touch it up because no businessman or, or businesswoman wants a mural to start to look shabby on their place. And, um, and Jeff explained, like, what the murals he's done in St. Andrews and what the touch-ups are. You wouldn't have to use Jeff. You know, there's no, no guarantee that he'll even, you know, we don't know what his plans are down the road. I mean, any artist could touch it up. Oh, you mean for touching up, but I mean- For touching yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, okay. And I mean, and in my files, um, all the colors, I have all the colors that he used. So, I mean, if, if somebody was gonna do the touch-up and they were, they needed to see what colors he actually used. Um, he supplies me the colors. Mimi, me? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, just one thing. That's on, going to be on the uh, uh, plumbing department, uh, plumbing, plumbing building. Which side? 
it's going to be on uh, looking down King Street. So Ian owns the building, and then Ian owns a vacant lot right next door to it. So if, you know, properties further down are sold, um, there will always be like an, you'll always be able to see it. They didn't know, yeah. but that lot was there. If someone had built on it, it would cover it over. So I'm yeah. assuming no, it come down through there. No, that, that I think that's going to be a great addition because Sussex has had them for years, mm -hmm. and yeah. they're everywhere, and right. they they really do add to the yeah. atmosphere of the town. So. Well, we're doing our slow. I mean, uh, murals have become very popular. Um, you know, like the street art, the you know art tourism. It, it's become very popular. So my, my goal is to get like place cards and maybe place them in, you know, the chocolatier and the, the chocolate museum and have each mural with a little description. Because each mural in our town tells a story. And they're all great stories. So I have, um, I have applied under the Fundy Community Foundation. Um, the deadline was coming, I, and Sunbury Shores was uh, gracious enough to open up the grant process, and they have collaborated with us. Um, I didn't want to cause hardship to the senior management um, with their workload to process the, the grant dollars, so that's why we went to Sunbury Shores. Which is a proof. <coughs> Councilor Reno? Yeah. Um, something else you might consider when you talked about the amount of, of um, visibility it was when, when Jeff was actually painting the, the mural, you might get somebody to set up a, a fixed camera so that you have a time he lapse. That. He does that? He does that. Okay, good. That's and, what. Um, I, like, he, he received national coverage on the mural painting the light. Um, just the story, uh, you know, and, and I mean, Jeff's a wonderful uh, artist and he can tell stories and he's just an interesting person. Yes, and so, I mean, there wasn't a time that I walked by or drove by that there wasn't people standing there talking to him and getting pictures and, and so it really, it, it, it was good. The mural that was on the St. Croix Public Library, he did in a studio, and then he brought it and he placed it. But him doing the actual work, and he figures it will be about a month, so there will be a month of him being downtown painting. And so it will, that itself will uh, increase, I think, foot traffic. Or Ian will feed him well too if you're next door here. Ian will be buying him lunch all the oh, time. Gracious, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a, a question that, like, where we're getting so many of these things, and I'm wondering about protecting them and contractual stuff because we don't own these buildings. How, how are they protected? Because um, I don't believe they are. So I, that's why I'm concerned about. So, with uh, one of the grants that I applied for under. Uh, with the SIM court building, they wanted us to uh, prepare a, mm, a contract um, between the BIA and Bob Sweeney. And I think we put a 30 year on it. M, oh shoot, wait, what is, pardon me? Memorandum of Understanding? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing with the next one? Uh, uh, I would say so. If, if uh, uh, there's just different grants would want that, so I think probably I would do that anyway just to protect both of us. Councillor Heislip? Um, you say you have the color palette for all those, so maybe that, do we have a copy of that too for the town? Just that 10 years from now we're not going to be here, or I'm not going to, probably not going to be here. <laughs> like I'm going to be here, but I'm not going to be in this room. <laughs> I hope to be here anyway. 
and uh, you know, and then people change. So I mean, so we should have it in two locations just for the town if we're going to do the touch-ups on it, just to have a copy yeah, of that. Well, I probably won't be at the BIA either. <laughs> and uh, I'm just saying, like, well, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to be at the BIA. So um, all places, yeah, so that I, perpetuates I, on. I can send you the 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 colors are all on his invoice. Yes. Yeah, perfect. So. Yeah. If you have the files from the other two, you would have the, uh, but I can most certainly send the, 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 his invoices on to you. All right, I'm guessing this is the same thing because we really don't know how the funding's going yet, so we'll just wait in here and mm -hmm. sounds. Oh, I'll get the funding. Yeah. I, I have no doubt, so I mean, if, you know. If talking next year or this year. I'm talking this should be done July or August. So we'll, th this mural will be up by the end of August for sure. Okay. When was that one done downtown? Just last year? Or has that been two years? Simcorp? Yeah. Uh, 2022. Where's the time going? <laughs> okay. I just want to, I want to, like, we discussed keeping the space between them, so because yeah. of the upkeep. And, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm good. The uh, public library, 18, what well, was St. Stephen, 1871. So that was in 2021. That was in celebration of St. Stephen's birthday. All right. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to move for a second to move into the Chief Administrative Officer's uh, uh, acknowledge his report and received. So Council Wright, Council Greenlaw. Uh, Jeff, do you want to, anything you want to speak of there? Sure, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the report was in your package. Um, few developments along the way. Uh, since the writing, um, the strategic planning um, work continues. Um, thank you to everybody who, who did the homework that I, that I assigned to you. And uh, I've been going through your, the responses and, and prepping for our, our meeting next week, um, which should be a good uh, discussion, I think. Um, with respect to um, looking at an, a quote on municipal insurance, we're in the final stages of that. We just got the last bit of information in, I believe, um, and uh, uh, the executive assistant um, is uh, making sure every, all the, everything's there for the uh, for, to, for the quote to be a, or the proposal to come in. Um, municipal grant opportunities. Um, been spending some time. Um, Based on our earlier conversations and strategic planning, looking where uh, we can find some money, um, particularly uh, under the FCM programs. Um, as my report says, uh, as I did that, I found out that we had, we had actually been locked out of the FCM portal for a little bit. Um, that has finally been rectified um, through um, some really good work from, my, from the IT folks at, at FCM. And um, I'm starting to work through some of the uh, uh, looking at the applications and the processes for uh, a few things that we can talk about um, as our strap plan comes together. Um, again, just an update from today on the Financial Services Review RFP. Uh, the Treasurer and I um, ironed out the last couple of uh, uh, issues or uh, concerns uh, to make sure we were both com very comfortable with the RFP before it got sent out. Um, so we did that, uh, that done this afternoon. Um, so now we're just working on um, some timelines as far as getting the RFP out and posted and um, the date that we're going to require for the final uh, report to come in. Um, looking at probably um, your committee of the whole meeting in September being the target for the final report to come in um, so that the results and the recommendations can influence the budget um, discussions um, so that it all lines up. Um, <laughs> And I'm very happy to say that we finally have taken a, a big step in our records management program. Um, the executive assistant and I um, now have on our, on our calendars, we call them file room Fridays. Um, and we're going through a bunch of old, old boxes um, and working on um, getting things cleaned up um, and getting things uh, that can legally be disposed of, disposed of. And uh, the other things being filed in a way that we you know, have an outside chance of finding them <laughs> without too much effort. Um, so that's been that's a big project that's going to take us a while, um, but uh, later on the agenda, um, we do have a request that you uh, the council confirms the uh, municipal records authority document as our guiding um, document for records retention, which is the standard in in the province. But uh, we don't 
technically where we couldn't find it on the books where we had actually adopted it, so we wanted to get that on the record to help us out with our work there. Um, and on top of that, just a, one last note, again, kind of feeding from our previous strat planning discussions. Um, last week, uh, I reached out to both downtown St. Stephen and the chamber um, to initiate in a conversation about a, uh, how they would recommend um, my office specifically um, become better connected to our, to our business folks. Um, and so we've had a few exchanges uh, over the last couple of days with some ideas and uh, we're working, we'll, you'll probably see some things coming out of that in short order, um, but we're, we're working to, to hopefully build some bridges and open some lines of communication moving forward, which again, I'm hoping we'll be able to also influence our 2025 budget uh, development type, type scenarios in our strategic planning work. So um, lots of things kind of on the go and, and in a lot of different areas, but uh, um, we've been keeping busy. Questions? Okay. I had a mover. I had a seconder. Or wait. Yes. So I'll, uh, all those in favor of, of the uh, acknowledgement of, and received of the report? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, is, uh, next is any public comments? If we're looking to build bridges with the chamber um, and the BIA, maybe at the second portion of our strategic plan when we finish up, even at the end of the day, if we could be reintroduced to the new um, chamber members, because I know they went through their AGM process, so I'm not really sure 100% who's all on that, so that would be great if we could just have sort of like a reintroduction to the new group. And I know there's a lot of new businesses in town as well, so just not during our plan, but at the end, perhaps, maybe they could come for the last half hour or something. Go ahead, Jeff. So um, the, the, the plan that I've been working from um, would have us finish our work uh, next week, hopefully, um, and then take the data that we have from there, the, that next round of results, and sit down with, with key partners like the Future, Future St. Stephen, um, the BIA, the Chamber, um, we have, you know, and, and, and start setting up some one on, like basically one-on-one -on -one meetings, chamber and BIA, we can discuss whether we can combine that one into one meeting, but, and, and have some real dialogue around the goals and the, and the, and the smart goals that we've been working on to figure out how best to achieve those goals. Right. So, um, I, you know, as opposed to right at, you know, at the conclusion of next Wednesday, um, I would, I would like a little time to, to, to finalize the documents, um, but then reach out to those organizations for, us for, for meetings to say, okay, here's what we've come up with, how can you influence it or whatever before we finalize. Yeah, we just need some priorities. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will have done that too, so just if we can all be in alignment, it will be great. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's, it's green now. Sorry, folks. Ready to beat it with a mallet there. Okay, so next up, a mover and seconder to move into the departmental information reports. So Councilor Heislip, Councilor Harding. We will start with the Deputy CEO report, Protective Services, Sean. I don't have a whole lot to talk about as far as protective services, but I will say that for the period uh, between February 22nd and March 19th, we had a total of 21 calls, uh, which is an average average month. Um, we did f uh, hire uh, Quentin Brown. Uh, he started this week to fill the uh, vacant firefighter position, so I'm glad to have Quentin on board. Getting that, that position filled. Uh, training is still ongoing, though some of the courses are, are starting to wind down. Uh, as far as the classroom part, we've got a bunch of uh, out in the field practical training that we've got to try and do now. Um, don't have a whole lot from bylaw enforcement to talk about. Uh, I did speak with the building inspector today, and he says that uh, 
building applications uh, are very, very quiet. Um, uh, but we anticipate that uh, as, as the weather gets better, that that should hopefully pick, pick up. Well, that's basically what I had to say as far as protective services go. Okay. Councilor Eastman. Yeah, Sean, uh, just, just one quick question. How, how far along are we on an EMO plan? Um, pretty, pretty good, actually. Uh, I, we've got to get the bylaw uh, passed, and I did send a draft along to Jeff, and I, and I know he's getting hopefully close to looking at that. But if we can get, <laughs> if we can get that uh, to, this, the, to this room and get it approved, then, uh, and then we would be able to uh, uh, take the next steps of getting that plan finalized. Thank you. Um, does it seem like, I know if the average number of calls is about average the 21, but the vehicle fires number one, that seems a little higher this, this. It was a busy vehicle fire month. <laughs> it was, that is, that is high. Okay. Um, no, no rhyme, no reason, just coincidence, but it is normally we see one, maybe two or for whatever this month it was for. Councilor Cornish. Well, hammer. Uh, just a quick question. I noticed when I was doing my income tax today, I actually seen something on there. I didn't know what it was. A lot in there I don't know on this list. But it says data entry for firefighters for tax credit paperwork. Firefighters get a tax credit uh, on their uh, tax return? Yes. Uh, there's a federal tax credit that uh, all volunteer firefighters are eligible for a $1,000 tax credit, but if uh, they can demonstrate through the work that I do that they have contributed 200 hours, then that gets bumped up to a $3,000 tax credit, so. Okay. okay. Council Greenlaw. <clears throat> yeah, on the building inspection, uh, Sean, if you could just explain, this, this is, uh, my office has issued one notice of discharge which is a registered notice to the province that the property has officially been released under the act as an unsightly property. Could you explain what released means? Is that the issues have been resolved? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Oh, that's working really good now because someone's hitting it for me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you in there. All right. No more questions? Okay. Next up is the infrastructure. Again, I didn't have a whole lot to comment on on my report. Uh, I will note that uh, wasn't noted in the report, but I, I was given a heads up earlier this week that uh, potentially an asphalt plant might be opening up a little bit earlier um, in the St. John area. Uh, we still haven't got any word on the one opening up here in Wawig, but fingers crossed that they'll bring that plant back and get it operational this year, and that makes things a lot easier if, if it does indeed come to fruition. Okay. Any questions on that report from Council? All right. Seeing none. Next up we have, uh, oh, they're not here, uh, Southwest New Brunswick Commission MD Planning Report. Uh, you guys see the report. Is there, do you guys have any questions or comments on that report? I do. Well, we'll do our best to answer. Or we'll get answers yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Council Eastman. Yes, I uh, noticed uh, as I was reading this, which is much better than the last ones, let me tell you. But uh, I have a little bit of concern on the 7 Elm Street issue that they have put down here with uh, having a hall, uh, public events including wed weddings and such on this thing. There is no hall on that road. There's a, that 7 Elm Street used to be the Dennis's house way back when. Where are you seeing that? I'm seeing this on page 23. Okay. <coughs> and if they're opening this up as a hall, then, then we're going to have noise problems and parking problems and... Is that the big blue place there? That's, that's the, the big uh, there, Ronnie Halstead's old house. The carriage shed garage and stuff there. Uh, it's right beside Darren McCabe's old house there. Yeah. Right beside or across? No, right, right beside. Yeah, I 
It's all the odd, all, all the odd numbers are on that side of the road. Anyways, that's, uh, I was going to pinpoint Alex uh, if he was here on this because this, this could be a, a potential problem down the road for us. Here, well, maybe it's a, no. It's on the same. It's on the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is uh, Kev Sumner with the Community Service Report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, apologies for being late. Just got back from Fredericton doing a seminar today, so um, just in time for the community reports. Um, the first item in my report uh, was just a uh, kind of an FYI for Council just regarding um, the recent storm that uh, impacted our uh, second compressor of the, this year, which is unfortunate for uh, us in regarding budgets and trying to stretch the, the, the dollars out. It was uh, it's the, one of the original ones from when the, the building was built in 2014. Um, we are looking through uh, insurance to get that um, uh, paid for that way. Uh, the, it does exceed our um, deductible. So I will update you as and when we get a, 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 a word back from the insurance on that. So um, the other th uh, good news I had yesterday um, before I, I left was um, we have been approved for our, our Wawa permit, which is the wetland and uh, watershed al alteration just for the erosion down on uh, by the Beacon Apartments, which was, uh, uh, we're waiting for it to dry out, which will take a little bit longer. Um, and when it does, we'll be able to put uh, put, put some rock in place. Um, and uh, we're still waiting on um, hopefully good news from the Trans-Canada Trail, just to see if we can get some funding there. They haven't approved it yet, but they're confident that we should be able to get at least something. So I'll let you know once, once that comes through. So. Um, Besides that, everything else in the report, uh, we had a busy weekend with the Day of Champions here in uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. We also had two Irishman games on the Thursday and the Sunday. Uh, very busy um, with that, and we've had, uh, we've got, uh, it doesn't stop even though the, the, the hockey season is coming to an end. Um, still got Irishman games coming up, uh, and then we move into trade shows and uh, different other things. We've got a circus coming. Um, we have uh, the trade show, which is, is going well, so um, it, it just doesn't stop. Um, I believe Councillor Greenlaw met uh, Michelle this afternoon just to talk about events and, and planning for the international festival as well, so it's, uh, it's going to be a, a busy summer. Uh, summer. Um, and as, as you've seen, the, the lighthouse has turned purple, so we're very pleased that's going well. Um, and we're, we're, we're shedding the light on the, on the uh, the cause there. Um, we're also working, been working on the uh, uh, the market plan for uh, the vendor, which is going to be taking place in the plaza. Um, Michelle's in the process of, of getting in touch with people who have inquired already, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and uh, yeah, with with the the other departments, uh, Jeremy and, and Aaron and Michelle, um, it's it's Aaron is gearing up for the summertime. Um, he's he's keeping his uh, courses going, and uh, he's got um, he's got lots of uh, plans for the outdoor pool. Uh, already talking about uh, international students, sorry, um, summer students. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I was going there. Um, and uh, and um, yeah, we've got uh, um, Jeremy's is busy with uh, getting ready for. Um, the, the weather that's coming, I know we've got concerns about the, the basketball court roof at Sing, uh, 6 King Street as well, um, the airport as well. So it's just uh, just, just busy, and uh, if there's any questions relating to the report, I'll, uh, I'll try and answer them, not waffle. So I'll, so I'll just take a, make a good comment for you. Uh, I'd like to thank you and your team for, uh, for the lighting up of the lighthouse. It was very well received. Uh, 
uh, Je- Jennifer McKeeman uh, was the one that had that up, and I like you know just publicly thank her for uh, bringing that to our attention. Uh, and uh, yeah, so just thank you for taking that on. It looks beautiful. And uh, Vicky, that was a great picture. Uh, so I, I shared that with them in, in email, and it just it was perfect. It was all the purple is on reflection on the water. Good job. So thank you for doing your part too. So. I stole it and I gave you uh, I gave you the kudos to them for taking the pick. So thank you. Uh, no, and, and they're very happy. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, Councilor Heislip. Oh, it's already on. Uh, the uh, discuss inclusion and access programs within the community. What what uh, can you shed a little bit of light on that? I got two questions. That's one of them. Uh, the or to says Michelle and I met with representatives from UMB and Milltown Elementary School. Um, so we had a, uh, there was a pilot program that took place um, through UMB and ja- Jackie uh, on a Sescu, who's a um, uh, uh, well-renowned uh, uh, professor and she, she's been around the country and now she's in, in New Brunswick and she's worked with uh, um, uh, areas as a pilot program just who are looking uh, uh, to help increase activity, uh, uh, people who are uh, struggling to, to, you know, if they're new Canadians or if they're uh, new to an area and there's obstacles there that get in the way, whether it's uh, not knowing about programs or access to equipment. Um, and we, we had a meeting with them. Uh, we got some good constructive feedback uh, from them that they partnered with Milltown uh, Elementary School and their school coordinator. Um, and we took a lot of the uh, MES uh, skates and we use them in our sports equipment library now uh, and we were able to to use them uh, it was one Saturday um, earlier in the year um, and they gave us some some good feedback on on what how we can help how, how we can help each other uh, moving forward and just getting more people active and, and it was just uh, it was just a kind of good discussion mutually beneficial for everyone so I think that's important mm-hmm. for everyone, not you know, newcomers or whatever. I think the access to schools that used to be community schools at one time that almost you know, we all pay our taxes for education and, and schools and we were allowed access to them at one time and now it seems to be limited and or, or with a lot of caveats to, to, to go through to, to use them. So I think those talks are, should be going on. I mean, I think we should be have more access for, for uh, seniors or for anybody that wants to be active. Because there's no, there's no, we don't have a field house here in St. Stephen, so the only place to use is the schools. Uh, unless it's summertime, then we have a couple of outdoor courts, which we're trying to get some more. That's coming up later on in the agenda. Uh. I'll, just, I'll add to that. Uh, that is one of the discussions that the, the mayors in the region are talking about, because it's the same thing all across the board. We're all trying to work on, and uh, and we're working together, so it gives us more strength as well. So they're, they're, they're starting to listen, because you, you're right. The, the facilities are there. It's not, it shouldn't be doubling up on them. We should be using, and and, uh, and the citizens should be able to use them. I totally agree. They'll be pushing on you. Okay. Yeah, no, be no, like. no, no, no. <laughs> uh, the other guy has one more question. Oh, and it was about the uh, vendors uh, for the plaza. Good idea. Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, farmer's market? Is that... Uh, is that something that's going ahead this year or because uh, I've heard that the board's not going ahead? I don't know. They've just heard stuff on the street. That's all. So <laughs> Tim Horton stuff. <laughs> Tim Horton stuff's important. Um, no, the uh, the farmer's market, the executive resigned. It's dissolved, uh, which is why um, we, as the, uh, the events department uh, with the municip- municipality, we, we took it over. We've been developing it. Um, uh, it was actually Jeff's idea to put it in the plaza, and it's you know because we've got that great spot, and uh, you know we want to showcase that we've got power in there, in there now, um, and we want to uh, you know get it, get more people. It's safer being on this side of the street and, and having it cordoned off. Um, bathrooms are closer. Uh, it helps us as well with our waterfront because it has had some uh, damage on the grass. Um, so we just wanted to, to, to highlight that and uh, just to go back to the, um, the previous comment about the, uh, the equipment as well. I just want to plug to the, to the sports equipment library because um, people can, can use that equipment for two weeks. They don't have to return it exactly in two weeks. They, they can use it and bring it back within a week or ten days. It, it matches our canteen hours. Uh, we try and be as flexible as we can. It's not just um, 
skates and, and hockey equipment. There is some some uh, outdoor sports equipment as well, um, and and it takes you know three minutes to to set up a a membership. Um, I did it myself, and it, it, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So it's it's very easy just to you know it's just a name, phone number, details, and then once you have it, it sends a reminder, and it's very user friendly. So uh, and just another shout out. Just we were going back to the the um, the light. Uh, so I wanted to thank Sean and his crew because they made it happen as well. Uh, and now we can, we can, if there's a cause, we can change the lights to, to match different colours too. So it's, it's not just changing the light bulbs, it's with the push of a button. So, Councillor Harding. Hello. Oh, it worked. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about Middletown. Um, flowers between the monument, uh, the Cotton Mill Monument and the border. Is that, can that happen this year, or do we have to deal with Envy Power to see if they can be put on the polls, or what's the story? If we, uh, I, we haven't got the budget for it this year, because we, what we said is, is the budget we have set is for what has been there previous years. If we want to add to that, we will have to look at other things. I know there was discussion about uh, Elm Park and, and, and the rest of the uh, Milltown Boulevard. There is also some power poles that MB Power won't let us put anything on. Um, it's it's restricted. We can't put the the Legion banners on there as well. So we have put um, planters and uh, hanging baskets. You know, Milltown Market, like you said, the Cotton Mill Monument. We've got the Jake Donahue Park. We've got um, Turning the Corner as well. So if we wanted to add to that, we might have to ask you for some more money. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can say thank you, Kev. Um, so what about maybe at the Jake Donahue Park? Could we put more flowers there uh, and maybe work on getting, like maybe we'll have to contact NB Power to see if they'll allow anything like that. Uh, you say on some polls they won't, so uh, maybe that's, maybe we could do that. And that, yeah, that's the information I've, I've had from, from uh, you know, Dave Beach who who's our, you know, works, works with these guys very closely whether it's putting up the high school banners or, like I said, the Legion banners. Um, I, and I'm, I'm not sure if Councillor Greenlaw knows anybody at, at NB Power that, that could, could give us a, a definitive answer, but I think just adding to those you know, is going to be a little difficult. We can, we can certainly ask the question. And as regarding Jake, Dake Don, Jake Donahue Park, um, I'll have a chat with Jen and just see if there is anything, because it's, it's, that's one of our showkey, showcase Parks, because as soon as you hit the, hit the border, you 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 know that's a welcome to St. Stephen and Milltown thing. So. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Whatever you could do for us, we'd appreciate. Thank you, <coughs> uh, Councillor Rodas. Say, Emily. Um, thanks, Kev. There's lots going on too. I notice, like especially in May, it seems to be a busy month coming up. Um, I noticed August 8th, there's a free kids day at Garsland Civic Center. I just wanted to mention in our community safety meeting the other night, we had some presenters that talked about an opportunity to have almost like a family themed event with lots of kids that potentially is low cost where also nonprofits could set up because we have so many new nonprofits in our community that are um, delivering services to families, but a lot of our community isn't aware. And we had a conversation about how since COVID, a lot of people aren't necessarily sure of what's been developed in our community or come to fruition. So I'm gonna send you those names because it may be an opportunity if you're having a free kids day at Garsland Civic Center, it might be a really nice partnership. Um, they were already doing the planning for something and had asked about potentially doing something here where there were booths with nonprofits and information, but something kid related to bring families in. So I'll just pass that name along to you and then maybe that might be a good potential date or you know, something in the future where we showcase almost like the trade show, but for the nonprofits and services that are available in our communities, whether it's for newcomers or daycare or recovery services, whatever, whatever it may be. So thanks. Okay. Uh, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to add one small element to Mr. Sumner's discussion of the vendors market as we've designed it. Um, <coughs> We are um, going to be charging a nominal fee to the vendors to be there, um, but we are not looking at it as a revenue generator um, per se. 
our intention is that the funds raised from the vendors um, will be earmarked and set aside for improvements to the courtyard itself. So whether that's sunshades over top or or things like that, so it's reinvesting back into the into the square itself, and not to, the intention is not to have it lost in general revenue, but it's actually to take the money and then put it back into the area that the vendors are actually using. So um, for your knowledge, for the vendors' knowledge, I uh, just wanted to point that out that that is our, our intent um, as we designed it. Nice. Good forward thinking on that. Awesome. Okay. Next up. Can we see what's this? Uh, treasures report. Or treasures report from Tim Tozier, please. Thanks, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, three sections as usual, staff activity since the last report. Uh, nothing really there I want to point out unless anybody has any questions on anything. Um, moving over to the January 24 statements of revenue and expenditures, first one for the year on it, 8% uh, of the year uh, there. And of course, uh, as I've said before, revenues and expenses don't always flow exactly uh, uh, as a calendar year does. Uh, the general operating fund right now is showing at the end of January uh, a surplus of $173,487. Uh, the utility operating fund uh, showing a deficit right now or at the end of January 2024 of $172,966 and I expect that'll change into a surplus once we do the water and sewer bills at the end of uh, at the end of March. Um, as far as check the check register for the month of February there's uh, paid bills the amount of $1,786,103.96 listed um, if anybody has any questions you should get them off easy Tim you're good <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you okay so next up is future st. Stephen Jeremy uh, Jeremy Barham hello everyone it's my first time, so. Oh, yeah, sorry. Hi, Lizzie. Welcome. Again. <laughs> I uh, just have an update on the Spurline Hotel land, which has been a pain in our, well, it's been a pain for a decade. Uh, there was a slight delay. Somebody, one of the creditors, unfortunately, filed a request for a uh, for the court to suspend the sale uh, pending a investigation of the order of the creditors on the land in terms of security. Oh, okay. And um, hopefully the delay won't be more than a week or 10 days. So what's written there is true. It's just going to be delayed by a few more days. Any questions? On the whole report or just that one item? Okay. Well, any questions of council? Well, I'm not going to let you get off that easy. Yeah. Just talk, talk to us about the transportation thing because I'm interested in that too because I've stumbled on that one myself, the carry thing. You, you get anything, just kind of speak it so the public hears about it, might fire it up some. Yeah, so uh, they're a small rideshare company out of PEI. They caught my attention because they managed to make it work in a really rural environment and actually serve the whole of the island, not just the city. 99.9% .9 of rideshare companies just don't bother with rural service because they're not going to make any money. Uh, but these guys did, so I reached out and they um, are just a couple of guys and don't have big overhead, not a massive corporation, just a couple of regular guys who really wanted to meet a need. So I said, hey, don't suppose you want to give it a go here? And they said, yes, we would if we, uh, and so we made a deal to do a six month trial with them. So it's an app based service. You have to download an app for those of you who've never used Uber or it's like that. It, 
So you you request a ride on the app and the app hooks you up with a driver who is available and they will do a door-to-door -door service. I'm going to start within town and then hopefully expand to a uh, wider area as the ridership increases and the organization can figure out how to optimize the service. They're hoping to expand it and interested in expanding into the whole of Charlotte County. So I'm very hopeful that we can offer this in St. Andrews and St. George in the, in the near future as well. Yep. Uh, Councillor Wright. Thank you. Is there a start date for the pilot project or is it still in the? Yeah, May the 1st. May 1st. Oh, okay, perfect. I didn't hear that if you said it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, Why well, do I keep wanting to say Emily? Councillor Rodas, please. <laughs> um, hi, Jeremy. I have a question. With the ride share, is that something that they personally market or is that something that you may need support from the town to? to market what's coming. I just would want to make sure that everyone in town would be aware of how to use it. I know sometimes we have seniors that may not be used to using an app. So even if we can have some sort of information session where we actually um, support individuals who don't have never used these apps, how to use them, because it can be overwhelming for the first time to open up an app and try to figure out how to order a ride from your phone. So if there was uh, if there was an information session, I think that would be really awesome. It would be a great way to partner with the town too to make something like that happen. But I don't know if they do their own marketing or that's something that we need to kind of share and support them with. Yeah, it's a great question. The answer is it's us entirely. Yeah, and so I, that's part of our agreement is that is that I basically do the marketing. Yeah, because and I would love to do an information session with the town. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Council Harding. Thank you, Worship. Um, good to see you back, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have met on many occasions. But anyway, one more time, I like the hotel thing. I think it does sound good, the recommendation that we try to buy the land back. I think that is a winner. Um, I think in order to move this town ahead, I have say, say, said this 10 times, we have to have a hotel. We gotta have a hotel for pickleball. We have to have a hotel for, you know, tourism. for tourism. We have to have a hotel for the Civic Center. Conferences. Yeah, conferences. So kudos to you, Jeremy, if you can get this thing off the ground. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, Council Greenlaw. Yes, um, can you just elaborate a little bit more on the work on a resolution to the Starshine property issue? I wish I could give you some more detail, but I can't. Um, as it, it's a, I'm sworn to secrecy, and I hope to have results by the end of next month, hopefully. But, yeah. All righty, thank you, sir. Next up is uh, the Community Safety Standing Committee, and uh, who's going to do that? Is that going to be one of you two? Joyce, Joyce volunteered. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, just, you know, just kind of okay, sure. share some of the highlights. Um, okay, well, we've been meeting every two weeks, and I would say that as a new committee, it's basically... Um, there's always challenges with any new committee learning what it's all about and all of that but the last couple of meetings has some great great um, guest presenters and of course they're always open to the public and I do think that very soon we'll have something that's going to have come out of that that will be coming to to council for perusal in one form or another so um, anyway it's just a great group of people working hard and uh, not without its hiccups but we're getting there thank you all right. So, uh, at a mover and seconder, uh, all those, any more questions on all the reports? Departmental reports? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Next up, we got uh, 
I need a mover and second for bylaw number 05-23-3, a bylaw to amend bylaw 05-23 being the council procedure bylaw first reading. No second. Council Harding, Council Eastman, the bylaw 05-23-3, a bylaw to amend the bylaw 05-23 be being the council procedure bylaw be given its first reading and Whereas the Council of the Municipal District of St. Stephen is desirous to amend the certain provisions within the bylaw 05-23 being the Council Procedure Bylaw be enacted by Council for the Municipal District of St. Stephen as follows. One, bylaw 05-23 being the Council Procedure Bylaw enacted on the 9th day of December 2022 together with all amendments thereto is hereby amended by deleting section 11, replacing it with the new section 11 as follows. Section 11, brackets one, at the first reading of council the following, general, of following a general election or in the event of a vacancy of the position, council shall select a member to serve as deputy mayor. The deputy mayor shall act in place of mayor when the mayor is absent or otherwise unable to act. A mayor selected, a member selected pursuant to this section shall serve in the capacity of the deputy mayor until the next general election or until they resign the appointment, whichever occurs first. Bracket two, if both the mayor and deputy mayor are absent or otherwise unable to act, a member shall be selected in accordance with the Local Governments Act. Bracket three, further to subsections one and two, in the event of the office of mayor becomes vacant and, or the, vacant, the council may designate a member as acting mayor and such acting mayor shall continue in office until such time as another mayor is elected or otherwise appointed. Bracket four, any member des designated under subsections one, two, three, uh, above have the same powers to and duties of the mayor while serving on behalf of the mayor. In witness whereof the Missile District of St. Stephen has caused the corporate seal to be affixed to this bylaw this day. Is it this going to be this day? Yeah. No, no. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's that's a good point. Thank you. Uh, so here, that that was our first reading. So. Hearing that, is there any questions? And there is. Council Wright, please. I missed the last meeting, so maybe it was discussed, but I thought what came out of the committee of the whole was that, and I'm not for or against either way, I'm just asking the question, um, that it was going to be for a two year term so that it changed midway. Was that changed by? Okay, perfect. I just missed that memo. Thank you. Yes, it was changed because of the there's some a lot of implications for changing uh, in the no, tre treasury perfect. department. I just yeah. Want to make no. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you want other questions? All right. All those in favor of the first reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. New business request for decisions. Uh, Need a mover and seconder for the proposed resolution that Council adopt the Municipal Records Authority, MRA, established by the Provincial Archives of New Brunswick as the official guide for the management of the municipal records within the Municipal District of St. Stephen. Do I, can I do all these three together? No, I can't. All right. Well, well <laughs> so, <laughs> Councilor Heislip, Councilor Harding, uh, any questions? Uh, uh, Council Rodas. So does this involve uh, transferring the records over to electronic files as well? Is that part of this or is this simply just managing what's currently there, getting rid of what's no longer needed and can be legally disposed of and just filing in a, <laughs> I got some easier banner. Uh, yes, yeah, so this, the resolution we're asking you to do now would, would apply to in either scenario. Um, how long we, the records need to be maintained. Um, 
because that's what the MRA said so it said so your your retention schedule and, and your disposition um, as far as moving to a digital records management system um, we do want to move down that road um, I think that was actually even in the uh, budget discussions this year uh, at one point but what we're doing right now is trying to get the uh, the old stuff out of the way um, rather than trying to transfer even stuff that we don't need to be keeping now into an electric electronic form and then disposing of it anyway um, reducing the number of records that we want to look at going digital with um, and that we should reduce that prod the, the cost of that project so um, the groundwork right now is uh, is slow and, and tedious um, but I think it's necessary to build the groundwork for the evolution next evolution which would be towards the electronic records management programs Councilor Eastman does this involve hiring extra staff um, this decision here no it's uh, just the giving us the rules by which uh, Celeste and I are doing the work we're already doing <laughs> okay all right no more questions all those in favor Aye. opposed motion carried okay next up um, Housing Task Force. I move our seconder for the Housing Task Force. We don't have a resolution on yeah. that. Yeah. <coughs> I think that's why I was. That was a discussion item. Okay. Since I knew, there was something we wanted to do. All right. That's, I mean, from me, Your Worship. So okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, this has come up. Um, the, the, the discussion around. Um, the unsheltered population and the solutions there too that are being considered um, has recently um, started back up again ver through emails amongst a number of um, governmental representatives um, and of course one of the things and I mentioned at a previous meeting I think it was at Committee of the Whole um, that came out of the minister's press release um, was the insinuation declaration I'm not sure what, it, what we should call it um, that there would be a municipal tax task force on housing um, created and people have reached out and said okay I reached out to the mayor reached out to myself um, said okay where's where's that um, when the proposal when the dis initial discussion came up um, amongst the, bureau the, the bureaucrats involved in the, in, in the original uh, proposals um, my question back to the to my government my provincial government colleagues was I didn't I didn't see how the municipality had the capacity or expertise to lead the task force be a member participate be actively involved absolutely um, I said we'd be at the table at, without a problem uh, my suggestion was that this should be a since the government in Brunswick has the mandate for housing has the expertise has um, people literally carrying the homeless coordinator um, titles in their job descriptions um, that they're more uh, established to lead the task force and establish establish a task force and lead the process um, that's that's where it was left uh, and then shortly thereafter the announcement came out insinuating we are going to have a task force so I'm bringing it back to you folks um, because because we are having citizens ask and start and start questioning where this is at and what what's going on um, that perhaps a political response is required um, back to the minister back to the department to, to reiterate hopefully my suggestion the, the message that I sent to the bureaucrats which is we're ready to assist we're ready to play but you guys need to lead and we will will be will be there beside you um, because obviously the my bureaucratic requests and, and and pleas fell on deaf ears so my my, my goal putting on the agenda was one so the community can know that this conversations are happening because they're not seeing these and so the silence can be deafening and to, to to put it to let you folks have a discussion and make a determination as to whether a political response is is warranted and uh, and what that response should be yes and further that we we, we do got to get moving on that because uh, next next week could be interesting uh, uh, although we do have a meeting finally set up with uh, with the the minister or deputy minister 
about about the uh, about the housing issue that we're going to be running into when the warmer weather's coming and April 1st is uh, Neighborhood Works has done their contract so it's been a long back and forth of emails to uh, to get that get that together but it's I think we got a meeting actually it's the same day as our uh, strategic planning day it's late in that so I'll probably have to bow out at about 3:30 I think it is but Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, you changed it. Okay. Yeah, anyway, so that that stuff that has to get moving because it's it's like I said the warm weather and, and on top of that it's just it's going to be people re- with no places and and and, and uh, you know, it hasn't been it hasn't been an easy topic and uh, I don't want to increase it to to where we're at right now. So hopefully they hear us tonight and hear that uh, that uh, we're ready to play with the, with the task force, but uh, let them lead it and control it and, and, and use their toolbox. Okay. Oh, sorry. Councilor Rodas. I think what's challenging, too, as a municipal councillor is finding clarity on the situation because I know that Future St. Stephen is always actively looking at developments and housing opportunities, but it's one thing to ask for a housing task force. It's another thing to provide that task force with funding to make things happen. So I think that's the clarity I'd be seeking from GMB is 100%. Of course, we could put a task force together, but with what municipal budget to build housing? And if we don't have a budget, I'm not really sure what a task force is meant for. I mean, we developed a community safety task force because we had citizens who were actively interested in community safety and what we could do together as citizens to, you know, look at solutions and changes that we could make on the ground, whether it's more youth programs or um, attracting nonprofits. But building housing involves funding, and it's my understanding we've received zero funding from the provincial and federal governments towards housing. So, um, if, if you could ask that question, I would love to know, because I think a housing task force is a great idea if there's funding behind it. If they want us to coordinate some things, that's one thing, but if they want us to fund it, I'm not really sure where that budget comes from. And I think that's a question that the municipal taxpayers should be asking our provincial representatives as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes, go ahead, Councillor Heisler. Direction to you, Jeff, is should we have a political response? Is indeed we should have a political response. Yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? What else are we going to have a task for on health care now, too? Yeah. Or, I mean, it's just it's confusing enough in the public that who's responsible for housing. We're not responsible for housing. It's a provincial mandate. And it's, it's funny how they try to confuse the air and put it back on the community. It's, mm-hmm. it's not fair. We all take flack on it all the time, and it's it's getting that. ridiculous. And I mean, somebody's you know. I think the I think that emergency measures thing that we we set there put a shot across the bow, but I don't think it was enough. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes, Jeff. Um, yeah, I think at this stage, I I've, um, I, I I like to think that I fought the good fight um, in in the heights of of the original proposals and and the things that were going on, um, and made the administrative viewpoint on the matter quite clear um, to my colleagues. Um, that has fallen on deaf ears. And, uh, so my suggestion to, to Councillor Heisman's question would be, um, this should be a formal um, response from your worship to Minister Green um, directly, because giving it back to me to give back to bureaucrats that I already decided not to listen is not gonna make any progress. I think it's when I mean, we tried and it didn't fail, so I think it's time to take the next step, which is why I'm bringing it here. I think that uh, our colleague, uh, Mr. Greenlaw, Councilor Greenlaw, can bring that back to UMNB, and they should be working on that too as a united front within the municipalities of New Brunswick, because that seems to be a common theme now that's uh, that, that's happening, right? So, you got any comments on that, Councilor? Um, yeah, I'll bring that back to you. And we've been talking about that anyway. And, and ha- having a task force here, like unless they're going to define specific objectives that they expect us to, to to achieve, then you know, I don't know why we'd ever ever, ever form one. And funding it, it's you know, I, I really don't see where the logic is. And us, you know, all we can do is probably lobby or advocate that we want housing, which we're doing now anyway. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so that's, that's more or less what we need is uh, I need to, I need your power to be able to write that letter. So can I get the nod. All right, thank you. 
You want to see it before or after? All right, thank you, Council. Uh, okay, next up, community grant fund request. Um, I'm going to have a mover and seconder for that Council approve the community grant fund request in the amounts listed under the administrative recommendation column on the spreadsheet attached here to as Schedule A, the addition of for Neighborhood Works, Better Together campaign. Uh, a new mover and seconder first, please. So Councilor Wright, yeah. Councilor Heislip. Okay, Jeff. So, uh, sure. So, my apologies to Council. This is coming a little later in the year. Usually, we would have done this last month, um, but uh, we're getting things back on track here. The we took a look at all the uh, the applications that we had had in our files. Um, recommendations are there, as we've discussed at Community of the Whole previously, um, and, and we have a draft um, community grants policy for going forward um, and getting. Uh, potentially getting away from doing these operational style grants and um, but we had said that the grants that were already in um, you know they were submitted in good faith and, and uh, so we're treating them as we would have in previous years um, the recommendations are there with my notes uh, several of them I think should be if we want to continue supporting these agencies um, should be multi-year funding agreements so that just get the uh, amounts get operationalized inside our budget lines and the community grants fund can be standalone for um, the criteria under the new policy when it gets approved. Um, one thing to note, it's not in the report, and the treasurer was good enough to remind me before the meeting, um, there is a $6,800 um, earmarked from that fund. Um, traditionally, it has gone to offset the cost of the Charlotte County Museum's insurance premiums that were, that are, that were on our um, policy, which are being transferred in the process of being transferred off, but we do need to keep that in mind until we get the, see if there's a proration uh, moving forward. So, um, so the values there, uh, we should keep that in mind. Um, and then the last thing was, there's a re the, the resolution has a blank as far as the neighborhood works project as council had retained, um, they, wanted to, they wanted to have a discussion about that on an annual basis. Um, so no, uh, no recommendations from us on that one, um, but we did resupply the, the cover letter from that request um, for you to refresh your, your memory as to what that was about. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now as far as community grants. We do expect that there'll be more throughout the year. We know um, uh, Santa's Little Helpers and th things like that come up later in the year. Um, based on the math here, we, you'd still have some funds available for the later part of the year, but um, some, of the some of the projects and events that are included here are, are coming up quickly. We wanted to make sure that we got the, uh, their approvals or, 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 or non-approvals, depending on your decision. Um, through so that we could they could know what their funding situation is as they uh, prepare to launch their events Okay, Any questions or comments from Cal Council Harding Thank you your worship <coughs> Well, first of all, I want to say that I would not recommend to give anything to uh, neighborhood works uh, Only because they these same people that enable the very same people that hurt our community, I would not suggest, I will never vote, never vote to give them anything. Thank you, Your Worship. Councilor Rodas. I feel the opposite on that, just simply because we need to remember that Neighborhood Works' mandate was never to serve the homeless population. It was to do upstream work with youth. The province has put them in a situation where they are the only nonprofit in town that their mandate could be stretched to fill in this gap, which they have done, and they put in, they've been put in an awful mess. And so I actually feel like when we talk about um, community safety, one of the big things we talked about in our in meetings is upstream crime prevention. So for me, I think the most valuable thing for us to think about is in terms of our strategic plan, if community safety is our biggest priority, we should be prioritizing upstream crime prevention, which would involve opportunities for youth. So in my perspective as a counselor, I think there's going to be tons of community requests that come in around recreation and maybe even cemetery upkeep and things like that. But for me, my key priority would be opportunities for youth 
um, to live well and have a fair shot in this community because you have to remember the people that are struggling the most right now have youth living with them who will not be able to afford to go out on their own. They won't even be able to afford to move to the city and work at the grocery store anymore. So if we're going to give our kids a better shot, Neighborhood Works is probably the first step. And then there are many others that I think could benefit from our support, but that would be my two cents. To remember that Neighborhood Works never signed up for what they are in right now, and it will soon be done, and we'll be in it all over again, so. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, a, is, that is a good point, uh, Emily. It, it, it is, so, so yeah, what you're really funding, or supposed to be funding, is, is the, the original mandate or, or their game plan. Yeah, no, totally understand. Uh, Councilor Eastman? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm looking at all of this here, and, and I understand nonprofits quite well myself. They go out and they broad base everything to everybody. So that's, they're only asking us for this much. They're asking the Rotary Club for that much, or Lions Club for this much, and, 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 and they're just, uh, it's like a shotgun blast. They're just blasting it out there to see how much they can pick up. Uh, really, I think some of this, some of these requests are out, outrageous, to be honest with you. And uh, where everybody's tightening the belt here, we don't have a pool of, of money in the town itself that we can dip into every time somebody wants six grand or eight grand or nine grand. Uh, I think really we should be uh, taking a really hard look at some of these things and uh, really voting on them. Yeah, I just want to just want to comment on that. I mean, if 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 you don't put money forward to some of these things, you're going to be putting money somewhere else. I mean, it, it, they're all connected. But I'm not telling you how, how to vote. I just want to make sure you understand, or everyone understands, that you you do got to support these these groups in our community. There's a reason for that. They're they're providing a service for our community, and other other avenues would be uh, it could be worse. But anyway, did you? Or you just I don't know. I just I took a deep breath there for a couple of seconds. Well, there is a pool of money that we have it here. There's the, the staff has done their due diligence of making up the list and making the decisions pretty well for us. But we still have to vote on them, so we're doing the due diligence right here now. So uh, you know, so if there's some things you don't like, then we don't have to you know you don't have to vote on it. Right? That's the way it works. So, <laughs> so right? Uh, Council Greenlaw. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have an issue with these recommendations. What, what what I'm concerned with is that when we do give funding, we get a very detailed report back of how and what the money was spent on. That's that's my only concern here, right? So, yeah. And I think you talked about a funding agreement, like the funding agreements, as long as those are detailed enough and we know that, you know, they could submit a budget back to us to show where our, our sponsorship was, was spent. That would be what I'd like to see. Councillor Cornish. Well, I, have, <clears throat> I understand what everybody's saying here tonight, and I understand what's going on, but I'm going back further. I was part of the team from the St. Croix Parish that actually sold that building to this operation. And the definition of that from the diocese, the bishop, this was supposed to be basically what you described, uh, Councillor. And uh, the problem with the right now, asking for money, and I agree with Councillor Eastman also, is that <clears throat> This thing has gone off its track. It's not the same thing as it was when it was proposed five or six years ago and even two years ago. So unfortunately, uh, we have grown into something that's the people of the residents are now on that street, and I got two of them again today, are not even happy with at all. Several acts have been completed. <laughs> yeah, several acts of taking place there over the last couple of weeks that are not good at all for the neighborhood nor their operation. Driving by there tonight, I see a couple of individuals hanging around the door. And then the next thing that caught me was the same thing we talked about over a year and a half ago. All kinds of goodies, their personal belongings, which is sad, parked outside of the building on the main street. And we had to clean that up the last time. I feel for these people. I have no answers other than what we've been trying to do from state of emergency right through to 
trying to get land to build a building on and actually to housing them temporarily. But we haven't gained a freaking inch. And this building I has to go back to its original format of basically improving things and it wasn't built for this at all. It wasn't sold for that purpose. And I, I, I see what, I'm not saying I agree with you, Mark, but I do understand what you're saying. I do understand what Emily's saying. But I think we've got to have a clear definition of what this operation is going to be doing before we even think about giving any money away. Thank you. I'm not going to speak for Mr. Jim Stewart, but he would clearly tell you right now what he would be like to be doing here, and that's not what he's doing right now. He was literally, his hands was forced. But, but well, when, when we met with him the other day, his hand, you know, well, the other day, a month and a half ago. But, uh, but he's, just, you know, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're uh, providing a service and you rely on funding for the province, so when they're asking you to do a service, you, you, you know, the hand gets forced a little bit, and, and he's just happened to, well, probably the only one that could have took on what we needed. But uh, yeah, it's definitely not perfect. I don't think that. Uh, Councillor uh, Wright. Um, I just would like to say, Jeff, thank you for you and your staff who prepared that schedule. I do agree with the rest of the councillors and with your suggestion that we, we have adopted an actual grant policy that will be used going forward, but in good faith honoring the ones that have come in as they've come in pa past years, which are operational, and we can have a discussion for next year's budget should they be incorporated into a regular operational budget. Um, but for this year, we did budget a certain amount of money for these types of grants that have come in, and, uh, and I agree with your recommendations there. As for the Neighborhood Works one, that um, I'd just like to point out that this amount that was tentatively set out was from our very first council meeting as a brand new council. It was for their capital project for their original mission. It's not tied to what they did for this community over these past few months. So we need to separate the two things because this um, community grant, as you know, from all levels of government needs sometimes in order to get the funding, you have to have all the players put in their pitch to, or you don't get any of it. So this ties to that original request and we made the decision at the time to take it year by year rather than saying that year, yes, we're gonna do it for three years. So let's separate the two things because that's the right thing to do. And this will get them back on that track once this emergency thing that they handled for the government is passed. And uh, I will say that they, their, their game plan suffered because of what they did to step in and provide emergency shelter. So it's separate from it. And when they did prevent, uh, present the original proposal, there was a very detailed, thick, thick booklet with their budget, with a very detailed budget, with what this was going for. It was not operational. It was the capital fund that this was for. So if we can separate those two issues, we'll be, we'll be better off. Uh, and make a more informed decision, I think, if we remember that. Um, so this was specifically for that original request, which was 20,000 a year for three years for the youth programs and the stopping things upstream programs, as well as expanding the facility to host, um, I believe there was going to be all kinds of recovery programs, um, wellness programs operating under that one building so people who need the resources can get it all in one place. So that's what this capital request was for. I personally like it and I'm comfortable with the $20,000. It was allocated in the budget, not necessarily for neighborhood works, but we put 20,000 aside so that we had it. If we made that decision, this is not going outside of our budget. It's not breaking any parameters that we had previously set. I'm comfortable with the, the schedule as proposed in the $20,000. Uh, Council Greenlaw. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, <clears throat> you know, moving forward with this, what we need to make sure is that Neighborhood Works is not put in the same boat next year, next fall. That they're not what the government uses for a warming shelter or out of the cold shelter. The government needs to step up and do what they need to do to take care of, of that aspect of things so that Neighborhood Works can get to the work that they're supposed to be doing Absolutely. with the 13 to 18 year old people in the, in the community. I, 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 I can kind of, I don't know if everyone, everyone understands what went down there. I mean, we, we, we trying to get a temporary shelter. The timing was going, it was getting too late. Uh, and, and, and the day I met with the premier, we went to see Mr. Stewart and, and uh, he, he got us through the winter and that was the intention. But the, what the premier did commit to 
which we'll got to get it in writing on the third, hopefully, but uh, is uh, is to move out of the temporary shelter right into the, the, the second phase, which is an actual establishment to, to, to look after these people uh, in a proper way, not in shelters and, and uh, tents and all this stuff. So so I'm, I'm holding him to that. Uh, so And uh, hopefully we get some resolution on that on the 3rd of April. Yep. Uh, Councilor Heisler. Uh, not to beleaguer this any longer, but uh, I mean, I hesitant to use terms of we haven't gained anything or we haven't, you know, because how do you measure gains and losses? I mean, do you measure gains and losses in lives or how many shopping carts are at the end of the street or do you enter it by the gains of, uh, of individuals that are in one year of recovery now and are actively working in the community and, and, and doing quite well? Because uh, I know some of those individuals and they're doing quite well. And, uh, you know, they're they're... Uh, going back and getting a higher education, they're they're finishing off their school and they're and they're going to be moving on, either staying in this community and be doing work or you know or, or you know playing on doing a good uh, having a good life. So how do you measure you know losses or gains? And that's the, that's the thing that really that really bothers me. Saying we haven't gained anything or we're enabling somebody, but some of those people were enabled or were helped uh, from this last shelter over here that almost you know almost died. And now they're coming up on a year of sobriety and being an active member of society. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big gain. So. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Councilor Rodas. Yeah, I'd also like to add they're a driving force in our economy. They're employing, I think, around 50 people right now, which is fantastic. They're employing people who have found recovery um, and are getting reestablished, reestablishing their feet in the workforce. So all of that is a positive thing. And I, I just think we need to remember that, too, that they're not just supporting individuals who are unhoused at this particular time, but they're going to support us in having less unhoused individuals in the future when we get some of these kids housed in transitional housing because if we're if the province wants us to have a housing task force well we're actually by supporting this we're we're supporting transitional housing for youth because that was the key predominant priority so i'm all for it i think they're doing a great job i'd like to shout out to them if they're watching this council meeting you are supported in so many ways i know it's tough what they've taken on but i definitely am excited for a re renewal of their ability to engage in the programming that they wanted to engage in in the beginning. Thank you. Councillor Cornish. Thank you. My mic working. Uh, I understand what Mayor Hyslop is saying. That's one side of the coin. <laughs> Uh, no, Mayor, yeah, okay. I just promoted you. Anyway, uh, the bottom line is uh, we're talking about uh, losses and gains. Uh, I'm getting bombarded. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm telling people that I will not promise anything, same as I did when I ran. I have no answers. We as a group had had answers. We thought we were making progress. We're back to square one again with a print, print unless the province steps up. But we've got to look at the other side of the corner, and that's the residents of the town. What have they gained? Most of the residents of the town are telling me, I had a lady tell me on the street today that they're considering moving because they didn't come here for this. We received a letter, I think, we haven't brought anything up on it, another person saying they moved here. They're not used to this. The drugs are rampant in the street. And it doesn't make any difference who picks up the tab. It's the person that's in the press the most usually picks up the tab. But the bottom line is, I think the town has lost a lot of its integrity, lost a lot of its peace, and people are feeling unsafe. What have we gained? I'll stop there. Uh, Councilor Harding. Thank you, Your Worship. For the month of March, I left my phone on and I counted at the end of today, I counted how many phone calls I got in the month of March. 129, now keep in mind, they weren't all about the drug situation. But when I counted them up, 42 were, the rest were friend, friends and family. People are not happy. I don't know where in God's name you people think that people are happy, they're not. The people on the end of my phone don't like these people. They want them. 
I don't know if they don't like them or they want to move somewhere, somewhere that they can get the help. Throwing them a piece of bacon and a, a piece of toast, that doesn't do anything. Put them in an institution where they can get the help that they deserve and don't tell me that they don't want to go there. Thank you. No, this is it. No. Anyways, one thing I am going to say is we are not in this alone, folks. You want to move? Good luck. It's, 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 it, 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 it's, it's, it is everywhere. Watch the news, folks. I, I talk with the rest of the mayors. We're all dealing with this. And it's, it's, it, we're not alone in this. Do we want this? No. But it's, it's going to take a lot of work, and we're all struggling with it. So anyways, that's enough talk about this. Let's, uh, let's move on. And uh, what we need to know right now is if we're going to add this to the grant fund. Yes. So I read it. I had a mover. I had a seconder. Any more questions on this particular topic right here? All right. All the... Oh, okay, 20,000. Sure yeah. We're all clear with the res what the resolution is. Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, geez, I wouldn't even pay the volunteers that we have in our community that are there. It's, uh, all right, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Keep your hands up, please. One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? One, two, three. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is uh, a pickleball. pickleball. So I'm mover and seconder of the council designate a former skateboard part behind the rotary field for the pickleball court project. Councillor uh, Rodis, Councillor Heislip. Uh, the proposed resolution is the municipality provide support to the Pickleball Association for applying. Oh, sorry, I was skipping ahead, sorry. Okay, for the for the location behind the rotary field, or at the rotary field, at where the old skate park is. Any questions on the former skateboard park? I'll just make a clarification here. Yeah. We, we did sit at committee of the whole, and we did agree with that in principle. Mm -hmm. We just want to make it a little bit official now. So you know, moving forward, there's you know, if this group's going to apply for grants, that they can say that you know they have an area that's designated that they're looking at, and they can base their pricing on that, and they can base their grant or their grant applications on that so that's that's the clarification for these two items actually so any more questions or comments all those in favor Aye. opposed motion carried thank you mover and seconder for the proposed resolution that the municipality provide support to the pickleball association and applying for grants where the municipality is required to be the applicant Mover and seconder, please. So moved. Councilor Wright, Councilor Greenlaw. Uh, any questions? No. Councilor Eastman. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Darn thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to get into a scenario again, like we are with the basketball uh, thing, that we're going to be the oversight of any grant request for the pickleball. Um, so, I would say that I, would, my, I guess my response would be this one would be far less co complicated than basketball in this because based on your resolution you just made, um, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong with that understanding, that the court is being designated as the area but we will re maintain the, it's still going to be our, our asset. Um, where if, when it's our asset, we apply for grants for our assets all the time. Um, the basketball court in its original conception was not supposed to continue to be our asset for long term. Um, so it's a little bit different situation. Um, so uh, the ones that we really, um, the reason that this, the second motion was put on your agenda was regarding the clarification as to are we giving the land over to an association for them to own, operate and manage or are we saying we, we as a municipality are creating a pickleball court that we will own, we will maintain um, because those those grants are more appropriate for us to be managing through our, our staff and our administration than when somebody else flows money through us in order to get a project done. Um, so that's why we were asking. So in other words, uh, so in other words like if there's grants that the uh, Pickleball Association can apply for, they'll apply for grants 
but if there's some that the town can, because I think you already did apply for mm -hmm. one grant through the two, two for the seniors, so two. And so that, that was appropriate for the town to do it because it's their asset, so. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Senator correctly pointed out the most uh, analog analogous, analogous, yeah, I can't say that today. Um, the most, the best comparator <laughs> is the dog park, right? We had a community group out raising funds on their own. It was our asset. We own it. We maintain it. We did our own, we, you know, we added our own funds. Um, but it's still our asset, so it's still ours. So that would be the, the, the best comparator there, so. Did you, you good now? Okay. All right. Oh, oh, sorry, Councillor Harding. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, is Tim okay with that? Does it mean more work for him and his department? And Kev? It would be a little bit more work, but I don't anticipate it's going to be a huge amount of work for it's going to be the town's asset. There won't be anything like the basketball court thing uh, with it. So. I mean, uh, it sounds like, uh, according to the resolution, is basically grants. Doesn't sound like to me that it's donations uh, that we're going to be handling for it. It's just going to be grants. So if we get a grant for five thousand dollars, then then we'll expend it on capital expenditures or whatever for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the pickleball court. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and then hopefully we'll have a grant writer here soon. Cause just that's coming up very well I think it might be already hired yeah, yeah no 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 we got one coming so not not we as a municipal district but as a region but it's all it's for us to use so. all right I had, a, I had a mover I had a seconder any more questions all those in favor Aye. any opposed motion carried thank you all right mover and seconder to accept the council uh, reports be acknowledged and received Council Islip, Council Eastman, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, motion to close meeting to the public. <laughs> uh, well, I, I thought that's, I'm gonna read some more here. Uh, the resolution uh, pursuant to section 68 bracket one, the Local Governance Act, the council moved to close session for the purpose of discussing a financial matter and a personal matter. So uh, Councillor Cornish, Councillor Rodas, any, all those in favor? So, aye. aye. 